Thank you once again and uh, welcome to welcome back to our video streaming and uh, we were going through the prophets and uh, the messengers and I'd like us to get back to where we left and uh, just uh, a synopsis of uh, where we ended. In the previous video we were looking at uh, the life sketches of E.G. White and uh, her experiences and uh, we have traveled all the journey from her girlhood to the years 1890s to 19 zeros the early 19 zeros and um, we just want to continue from that point looking at um, the last battles that she had after she came out of Australia and what she was facing with the uh, Battle Creek and then the case of uh, Dr. Kellogg. And so I welcome us and I pray that uh, we will be benefited by uh, this uh, presentation. And so let us pray as we begin. Our dear Father in heaven, thank you for the Sabbath and thank you for these feeble instruments that we work with. May they work for the glory and honor of your name as uh, the truth is vindicated in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, knowing the crisis that uh, really Kellogg had and uh, the, the promise for E.G. White to take care of Kellogg after the parents' death will help us understand better this presentation, do everything to save the doctor. I have uh, entitled um, the presentation of this hour, uh, uh, advancing in a, a crisis, do all you can do to save uh, the doctor. And uh, this is th th this was a critical time in uh, Adventism. This was a critical time in Adventism uh, where uh, Kellogg uh, had uh, taken the sanitarium and uh, was turning it into a denominational uh, property. Now, uh, without going into much, if you haven't watched the other videos, please do. But uh, this is where I want us to uh, see and uh, be able to look. Uh, and this is in letter 1903, letter 242, 1903. During the night, the Spirit of God has been uh, presenting many things to my mind. The experience that was given us unto the us at the general conference held in Battle Creek early in 1901 was um, of uh, God. Had Dr. Kellogg at that time done thorough work, the terrible experience through which we are now passing will have, will never have been. God has permitted the presentation of the combination of good and evil in living temple to be made to reveal the danger threatening us. The working that has been so ingeniously carried on, he has permitted in order that certain developments might be made and that it might be seen what a man can do with the permitted with the human minds when he has obtained their confidence as a physician god has no god has permitted the present crisis to come to open the eyes of those who desire to know the truth he will have his people understand to what lengths the sophistry and devising of the enemy will lead then she goes ahead to say, men have given to our leading physician a legend that is due to God alone, and he has been permitted to show what self-exaltation will lead men to do. Scientific, spiritualistic sentiments representing the creator as an essence pervading all nature have been given to our people and have been received even by some who have had a long experience as teachers of the word of God. The results of this insidious devising will break out again and again, there are many for whom special efforts will have to be put forth to free them from this uh, specious uh, deception. And so, um, as Kellogg was presenting his ideas, as Kellogg was presenting uh, his ideas, uh, the prophet had uh, words of warning to all who could hear. And... Uh, this crisis had been coming in and brewing in uh, through the 
Controversies of uh, Minneapolis 1888. And uh, the work of E.G. White was to warn the people about all uh, these things that were happening. And so we shall find out later that as the plates of the living temple were uh, on the shelves to be printed, actually the publishing house burned down, later on the sanitarium burned down, and E.G. White said that um, no mammoth building should be set up once again. Uh, the Lord had directed no such a thing should happen again. But um, people had gotten their allegiance to man and had put man uh, where God should be. And this is the problem that uh, you will find repeats itself with every movement. Men putting men where God should be and trusting more in men than trusting in God. And so she continues her dialogue that... Uh, I am authorized to say that the time has come to take decided action. The development seen in the course of God is similarly uh, similar to the development seen when Balaam caused Israel to sin just before they entered the promised land. How dangerous it is! How dangerous it is so to exalt any man that he becomes confused and confuses the minds of others in regard to the truth that for the last fifty years the Lord has been giving His people. Few can see the meaning of the present apostasy, but the Lord has lifted the curtain and has shown me it is meaning and the result that it will have if followed to continue. We must now lift our voices in warning. Will our people acknowledge God as the supreme ruler or will they choose the misleading arguments and views that when fully developed make him in the minds of those who accept them as nothingness? And so uh, I want us to catch uh, these sentiments that... Um, Whatever Kellogg was uh, really propagating was turning God into nothingness. If such a views that he was espousing could be taken as the truth, it will turn God into nothingness. I uh, just wanted that to sink in a little bit. These words were spoken to me in the night season. The sentiments in living temple regarding the personality of God have been received even by men who have had a long experience in the truth. When such a man consent to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we are no longer to regard the subject as a matter to be treated with the greatest delicacy. That those whom we thought sound in the faith should have failed to discern the specious deadly influence of these sounds of evil should alarm us as nothing else has alarmed us. Now, the, the, these are, are uh, strong sentiments coming from E.G. White. And... Uh, it's amazing that she says that uh, those who should who could those who could have known better uh, have not known what all these things are all about. What all these things are all uh, about, and you know the track of lies and the track of truth lies close to each other, and it's hardly uh, distinguishable. But by the spirit of God. And so today also we may be listening to some things and uh, we say amen to them when in reality it's a, a track of lies lying closely to the track of truth. When Kellogg started his sentiments, many people were deceived by them. If uh, we didn't have a living messenger among us, it would have been espoused as the greatest knowledge that the Lord has ever given to the church when it was only a species of nothingness as um, she says herself she continues to say it is something that cannot be treated as a small matter that men who have had so much light and such a clear evidence as to the genuineness of the truth we hold should become unsettled and led to accept spiritualistic theories regarding the personality of god these doctrines follow to their logical conclusion sweep away the whole christian economy they estimate as nothing the light of the that Christ came from heaven to give John to give his people. They teach that the sins just before us are not are of sufficient importance today to be given special attention. They make of no effect the truth of heavenly origin and uh, rob the people of God of their past experience, giving them instead a false sign. During the past night, I have been shown more distinctly than ever before that these sentiments have been looked upon by some as the grand truth that are to be brought in and made prominent at the present time. I was shown a platform braced by solid timbers, the truth of the word of God. 
someone high in responsibility in the medical work was directing this man and that man to loosen the team by supporting this platform. Then I heard a voice saying, where are the watchmen that ought to be standing on the walls of Zion? Are they asleep? How can they be silent? This foundation was built by the master worker and will stand storm and tempest. Will they permit this man to present doctrines that deny the past experience of the people of God? The time has come to take decided uh, action. Many times, E.G. White says that um, these new theories are robbing the people of their past experience. Now, notice these are the years of 1903 heading to the this fellowship, this fellowship of uh, J. H. Kellogg. And uh, if she is talking about the past experience, what past experience is she talking about? The years 1840s uh, to 18 to, to 1888 and, and to 1903 were actually a species of new theories concerning the personality of God are coming in. Remember, this is not a presentation about the personality of God. I'm just going through the messenger still speaks, prophets and messengers, and uh, proving that E.G. White was a, a messenger of the Lord. And going through the uh, her biography and what she had to face before she died, this has nothing to do with the uh, hammering the people, the, the doctrine of the personality of God, as people may call it in uh, quotes. Uh, um, I was instructed to call upon our physicians and ministers to take a firm stand for the truth. We are not to allow atheistic, spiritualistic sentiments to be brought before our youth. Now, it, it is very interesting that uh, E.G. White says that um, part of what Kellogg is presenting is atheistic in nature. Now, it, it's amazing why what we know about atheism. Atheism is a denial of the existence of God. By the way, and uh, denying the existence of the true God is not a denial of any existing gods because Pharaoh was atheistic, but he believed in the gods of river Nile. He believed in the gods of fertility and so on. And so there's a narrow compass of how we view the word atheism. You can be a spiritual atheist. It doesn't mean that you are not spiritual. You are just atheist to the truth on spiritual matters as concerning the truth as far as it goes. But you have other things that you are espousing, which are uh, the replacement of the true spiritual aspects. So when E.G. White says that these are atheistic uh, sentiments, Think about that, speaking about Kellogg, Kellogg who believed that there is God, Kellogg who believed that there is uh, Jesus, and Kellogg who believed that there is a spirit. Sister White calls her, uh, his sentiments in the living temple, atheistic in nature. Uh, you remember that she said uh, that um, these theories were nothingness. They made God, the personality of God, as nothingness. Also, in another place, she says that... Um, uh, this theory sweeps away the whole economy of the sanctuary. She saw that atonement was gone and God was gone also. The sanctuary was gone and atonement was gone. And so uh, I find it uh, interesting that uh, she can say that these, uh, 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 these things are atheistic in nature. They, we are not to allow atheistic, spiritualistic uh, sentiments to be brought before the youth. God has led us in the past, giving us the truth, eternal truth. By this truth, we are to stand. Some of the leaders in the medical work have been deceived, and if they continue to hold fanciful, spiritualistic ideas, they will make many believe that the platform upon which we have been standing for the past 50 years have been torn away. These men need now to see with anointed eyes, with clear spiritual vision, that in spite of all man can do, the foundation of God standeth sure, and the Lord knoweth them that are his. Now, if these statements are being made in 1903 and she says that they are sweeping away the truth of the last 50 years, I want you to think once again because it is claimed in 1898 when uh, the Desire of Ages came out that E.G. White changed her ideas. But again here in 93, 1903 she is saying that the truth of the last 50 years and so whatever Kellogg was doing was sweeping away the truths of the last 50 years. 
not just the truth of the last few years or five years uh, that um, uh, she penned down the desire of ages. Th these are the, 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 the hitting points that uh, we should look at when reading the, what Sister White is speaking about. She talks about what Kellogg is doing he is sweeping away the truth of the last 50 years, meaning that E.G. White was believing the truth she has been propagating for the last 50 years and not last five years or six years or so. Uh, also, these are high points that uh, we should also note. And so um, these men need now to see with anointed eyes with clear spiritual vision that in spite of all man can do, the foundation of God's son is sure and the Lord knoweth them that are his. The message to the Laodicean church comes to us at this time with special meaning. Read it and ask God to show you it is import. Thank God that he is still sending us messages of mercy. Those accepting the theories regarding God that are introduced in living temple are in great danger of being led finally to look upon the whole Bible as a fiction, for these theories make of no effect the plain word of God. The tempter is working together together at Battle Creek a large number as possible, hoping that they will receive false ideas of God and his work and thus make of no effect the impression that God will have made on the minds of those engaged in the medical mission or work and in the gospel ministry. God abhors the great swelling words of vanity that have been spoken by some connected with the sanitarium. The judgments of God have been visited upon the Battle Creek and these judgments call for humiliation rather than for proud boasting and self-exaltation. The heavenly messenger turned to those professing to be medical missionaries and say, says, missionaries and said, How could you allow yourself to be led behind, blind, how to be led blindfold? How could you so misrepresent the name you bear? You have your Bibles. Why have you not reason for cause to effect? You have accepted theories that have led you away from the truth that are to stamp their impress upon the characters of all seven day Adventists. Your leader has been removing the foundation timbers one by one and his reasoning will soon leave us with no certain foundation of, of, for our faith. He has not heeded the testimony that God through his spirit has given. The books of the Bible containing most important instruction are disregarded because they say so much about a personal God. He has not known whither his feet were tending, but in his recent writing he tended this towards pantheism has been revealed. So again, interesting that um, uh, E.G. White will say that um, Kellogg was tending towards pantheism and pantheistic theories and atheistic sentiments. And so that is why uh, those who have been studying what Kellogg wrote have ended up that saying that um, Kellogg was a fully grown pantheism, not pantheism per se. But uh, why is uh, E.G. White again talking more so about medical missionaries? At that crisis, actually, she had something interesting to say in the book of uh, 1888 messages. In 18... Uh, uh, in 1888 messages... She had to say this in uh, page 886, paragraph 3. And it is interesting while she is addressing the medical missionaries and uh, what Kellogg is doing, she goes ahead and uh, says this. Uh, I feel my spirit stirred within me. I feel to the depth of my being that the truth must be born to other countries and nations and to all classes. Let the missionaries of the cross proclaim that there is one God and one mediator between God and man, who is Jesus the Christ, the Son of the infinite God. This needs to be proclaimed throughout every church in our land. Christians need to know this and not put man where God should be, that they may no longer be worshippers of idols, but of the living God. Idolatry exists in our churches. Means had better been employed to save souls from death, which will be placing jewels in the crown of Jesus Christ and stars in our own crowns in the kingdom of heaven. Now, it is interesting, people say that don't agitate this thing of uh, a personal God and Jesus Christ as his son. But the messenger says that uh, let this be proclaimed in every church and in every land because some someone has been trying to obliterate the truth and obscure that which should be made in due season to the churches. 
Now, again, the enemy of souls has sought to bring in the supposition that a great reformation was to take place among Seventh-day Adventists and that this reformation will consist in giving up the doctrines which stand as the pillars of our faith engaging in a process of reorganization. When this reformation to take place, what will result? The principles of truth that God in his wisdom has given to the remnant church will be discarded. Our religion will be cha changed. The fundamental principles that have sustained the work for the last 50 years will be accounted as error. A new organization will be established. Books of a new order will be written. A system of intellectual philosophy will be introduced. The founders of this system will go into the cities and do a wonderful work. The Sabbath, of course, will be largely regarded as also the God who created it. Nothing will be allowed to stand in the way of the new movement. The leaders will teach that virtue is better than vice, but God being removed, they will place their dependence on human power, which without God is worthless. Their foundation will be built on the sand and storm and tempest will sweep away the structure. And so, now it is it's interesting, this quote is always quoted from 1SM. Uh, but here it is in letter 242, 1903, where actually she is addressing Kellogg specifically in the living temple. And so this is the matter. If we espouse what Kellogg was teaching, then we fall under this quote that we have moved from the true foundation and formed a new religion. Some people give out a shout that... Uh, those uh, who are not in the mainstream uh, Seventh-day Adventism, they have left the true church and have started a new organization. But this statement being written to Kellogg says that those who will leave the truths of the last 50 years are the one who will have ended into forming a new organization. It doesn't matter if you remain in the buildings that were there for the last 50 years. If you move away from the foundation of the last 50 years, you have formed a new movement even though you remain in the building that was built when E.G. White was still present. This was not written actually to the Battle Creek, but this was being written to Kellogg himself, but also to the people who are supporting his ideas and were not uh, 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 designing the very errors that were in his sentiments and saying amen to the things that uh, were not true at that time. Now, who has authority to begin such a movement. We have our Bibles, we have our experience attested by the miraculous working of the Holy Spirit. We have a truth that admits of no compromise. Shall we not repudiate everything that is not in harmony with this truth? And uh, I don't want to end up fully into this. The men who are on the committee of approving the living temple, I'll be able to do this when I'm running the series uh, actually about um, uh, uh, the truth, about uh, the God we worship his son and the spirit. And uh, this will be interesting to find the people who are in the committee that was approving the living temple and who Sister White was writing unto, who had started to espouse some um, new theories. Now, aftermath of Kellogg trying to take over the sanitarium and uh, spreading the issues of um, panentheism, and then uh, 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 having a... Uh, uh, atheistic sentiments and spiritualistic ideas about God. Uh, Sanitarium and Review and Herald banned in 1902 while Living Temple is being worked on to be released. God did not want it to be released in our houses. And uh, in 1903, there was the release of uh, the Living Temple. Now, in uh, uh, pamphlets, March 27, uh, 1903, Quotes appear in PH March 27, 1903, that God has cleansed this institution. That is the Sanitarium in Review and Herald. Statements issued next month in April 6, 1903, in the aftermath of the burning, let the conference, let the general conference offices and the publishing work be moved from Battle Creek. I know not where the place will be, whether on the Atlantic coast or elsewhere, but this I will say, never lay a stone or a brick in Battle Creek to rebuild the review office there. God has a better place for it. He wants you to work with a different influence and connected with altogether different association from what you have heard of late in Battle Creek. General Conference Bulletin, April 6, 1903, paragraph 11. Uh, in 1904, actually, Testimonies to the Church, volume 8, is published, repeating the same and gives further warning. Now, Testimonies to Church, 
uh, volume eight was um, uh, an answer to uh, the living temple. And also we have the ministry of healing answering to that. And so Miss White decries centralization in 1904. Although the fires took away the sanitarium in February of 1902 and the publishing house December 30, that same year, the former was rebuilt by Kellogg in Battle Creek against the Council of God, where she said that uh, in uh, pamphlets that let no stone be laid to, be re to rebuild that thing again. Notwithstanding uh, frequent counsels to the contrast, men continued to plan for centralization of power for the binding of many interests under one control. This work was first started in the Review and Herald office. Things were swayed first one way and then another. It was the enemy of our work who prompted the call for the consolidation of the publishing work under one controlling power in Battle Creek. Then the idea gained favor that the medical mission work would be greatly advanced if all our medical institutions and other medical mission interests were bound up under the control of the Medical Mission Association at Battle Creek. She says, I was told that uh, I must lift my voice in warning against this. We were not to be under the control of men who could not control themselves and who are not willing to be amenable to God. We were not to be guided by men who wanted their world to be the controlling power. The development of the desired control has been very marked and God sent warning after warning, forbidding confederacies, confederacies and consolidation. He warned us against binding ourselves to fulfill certain arguments that will be presented by men laboring to control the movements of their brethren and testimonies for the church, volume 8, pages 216-217. The pen of inspiration declared further in this time, the heavenly teacher inquired, what stronger delusion can beguile the mind than the pretend that you are building on the right foundation and that God accepts your works when in reality you are working out many things according to worldly policy and are sinning against Jehovah? Oh, it is a great deception, a fascinating delusion that makes possession of minds when men who have once known the truth mistake the form of godliness for the spirit and power thereof when they suppose that they are rich and increased with goods and need of, of nothing while in reality they are in need of everything, AT 249.3. And so she decries the Laodicean state and the leavening of uh, the whole of Battle Creek by the medical mission of fraternity being led by Dr. Kello with uh, his uh, living temple uh, book. In special testimony series uh, B, volume seven, published in 1906, which was four years after the Santarium was burned, warning against God's judgment will be executed because Kello in rebellion had gone against the advice and was again rebuilding this building. So a warning of the future and view of the past was being issued. So Sister White, uh, re-echoes the warnings in 1906 that um, God will execute his judgments based on what had happened in the past and what was being planned for the future. She was able to see with a prophetic eye what was going to happen. In 1907, Dr. Kellogg lose or lose, uh, lost, uh, lose of church membership over pantheism and other issues. At the turn of the century, his pride caused him to start turning and he lost confidence in Ellen White. The Battle Creek Sanitarium was divorced from denominational control in the year 1907. This is Arthur W. Spalding, The Origin and History of Seventh-day Adventist, Volume 3, page 141. And uh, by 1908, with the legal maneuvering, Kellogg got the control of the Battle Creek Sanitarium and the American Medical College, which were part of the same complex. The medical school went under in 1910, and merge with Illinois State University. And that is uh, uh, in the origin and history of Seventh-day Adventist, volume three, page 149. And uh, in 1933, the sanitarium went under in the collapse of Wall Street. In 1942, it was sold to the United States government and became the Percy Jones Hospital for Veterans. A few years before Kellogg took Battle Creek away from the denomination, the Lord was putting things in place to begin another work at Loma Linda. He showed the place to Ellen White in Night Vision in 1901. It was located and a down payment made on May 26, 1905. Miss White visited it in June 12, and as she stepped down from the carriage, she, she said to her son who attended with her, Willie, I have been here before. She later wrote that it was her desire that this place would be a true representation of what our health institutions should be. This is in Paulson Collection, page 
a hundred, page a hundred and seventeen. Now, um, this is the most important part of the presentation. Leave alone the fallout of Kellogg with the Seventh Day Adventism and uh, the repeated warnings of Ijiwa to the Battle Creek uh, office offices and officers, and uh, all that was transpiring. This last segment is the most important segment. And uh, my prayer is that uh, we may assume this attitude that E.G. White had. Kellogg was like a son to E.G. White. And uh, in uh, her admonition to church members and uh, to officials of the church, it is not only a prophetic voice we are going to read speak to us, but it is a voice of a mother crying for a lost child. And this should be the state that we should have also. Do everything you can do to save the doctor. And uh, this is part of the title of the presentation, Do All You Can to Save the Doctor. And so let us read on from MS 236, 1902. She says, I'm having things presented to me that worry my mind. Dr. Kellogg is traveling the same road that he did soon after taking up his responsibilities in the sanitarium. Human science is a lie in regard to God not having a personality. I know this is a falsehood. So Kellogg was saying God has no personality because these are the words of Sister White that these are the sentiments of Kellogg. I know this is a falsehood and yet if we can in any way help the doctor, we must try to do this. What can be said? There is such an exaltation given him that he is about to topple over the precipice. What can any of us do? The Lord alone can save Dr. Kellogg. His son of God in nature is true, but he has placed nature where God should be. Very, very interesting. His son of God in nature is true, but he has placed nature where God should be. It will have just been an exchange of this and all things will be right. Nature is not God, but God created nature. This son of God in nature is correct in one sense. God gives to nature, it is life, it is living properties, it is beauty. He is the author of all nature's loveliness. And while he gives us this evidence of mighty power, he is a personal God and Christ is a personal Savior. MS 236, 1902. Uh, in Berea Springs, Michigan, May 20, 1904, she said, Dear Brethren Daniel and Prescott, Yesterday, a very strong impression came upon me that now is our time to save Dr. Kellogg. Now, why is he... She writing to Daniel and Prescott, by the way. You remember in the previous presentation, Dr. Kellogg was pushed away from the denomination by the people who didn't embrace medical missionary work. This is what caused him to be so independent of um, himself and uh, 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 separate the right arm from the gospel, which was the worst evil to ever happen to the church. When you separate the right arm, from the body, you have nothing to work with. And uh, because of the way people are behaving in supporting and embracing the medical missional work, Dr. Kellogg saw that uh, the denomination was far away from Isaiah 58, and then the loud cry could not begin in doing these things that were in Isaiah 58. And so he ventured on doing them alone and independently because the church was not supporting it. The church was not buying it. They were behind in health principles. They were still arguing about what they should use and not use. And if there were any others who had uh, accepted the messages, it was by lip service, but uh, most of them were still uh, heavy flesh eaters while they were waiting for Jesus Christ, which was something that uh, really disgusted J. Uh, um, uh, H. Kellogg. And uh, at a certain point, uh, uh, which I will not give the quote, but I can provide when needed, uh, there was a camp meeting and they had agreed that cheese should not be sold in that camp meeting. When Kellogg came to that camp meeting, he found that they had invested in cheese, much of it, and uh, he was thoroughly disgusted and uh, sad. He asked the price of the whole container of uh, the cheese and bought it and gave the money and destroyed it. This is the crisis that Kellogg had with the church and the officers there. And then after that, he saw that he was fighting a losing battle and then he, he started going independent. Now, Sister White is writing not only to Daniel and Prescott and the very people who tried to push Kellogg, who did not try to embrace Kellogg, um, uh, she is writing to these people that 
if there is anything they can do to save Dr. Kellogg, then let them do it. And uh, I'll read on. She says, yesterday a very strong impression came upon me that now is our time to save Dr. Kellogg. We must now work with determined effort. We must not prescribe the precise steps he must take, but we must lay hold of the man himself and let him see the spirit of God and the spirit of soul saving are in us. Satan has worked to bind him up with himself, but shall we stand by and make no effort to pull him away from Satan? Shall we not, in the name of the Lord, call for Dr. Kellogg to come to this meeting? Not that we may make accusation against him, but that we may help him and all of us draw with Christ. Now, it is interesting, uh, E.G. White says, let us not put uh, the conditions of us accepting him. Let us just embrace him the way we, he is and give him the love of Christ and see what this can do. Instead of putting conditions of him, you must believe like this, you must talk like this, and uh, you must relinquish this and that. No, he says that let us just invite him, not to accuse him, but to show him the love of Christ for adventure if this uh, may work. She continues to say, not one of us is above temptation. There is a work that Dr. Kellogg is educated to perform as no other man in our ranks can perform it. And if he will draw nigh to God, God will draw nigh to him. We are to draw with all our power, not making accusation, not prescribing what he must do, but letting him see that we are not willing that any should perish, but that every man should have that which Christ died to present him. That is what? Eternal life. And that is... Uh, Special Testimony Series B, Volume 2, page 30, paragraph 2, that is 1904. Is it not worth the trial? Satan is drawing him, but last night I saw a hand reached out to clasp his hand, and the words were spoken. Let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me, and he shall make peace with me. Satan is striving for the victory. I'll help Dr. Kellogg to stand on vantage ground, and every soul who loves me must work with me. As he sees me do, so must he do now uh this 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 again reminds me of uh, 1 sm 122 uh uh sorry 1sm 118 sorry 1sm 118 paragraph 2 and um, uh let me share with us this very interesting in the work of this time, it's not money or talent or learning or eloquence that are needed so much as faith graced with humility. No opposition can prevail against truth presented in faith and humility by workers who willingly bear toil and sacrifice and reproach for the master's sake. This last, this, this statement that I'm highlighting is what I need. We must be co-workers with Christ if we will see our efforts crowned with success. We must weep as he wept for those who will not weep for themselves and plead as he pleaded for those who will not plead for themselves. And so this merges with this statement that um, I will help Dr. Kellogg to stand on vantage ground and every soul who loves me must work with me. As he sees me do, so must he do. Weep for those who cannot weep for themselves, cry for those who cannot cry for themselves. She continues to say, Seek to save Dr. Kellogg from himself. He is not heeding the counsel he should heed. He is not satisfied because the Lord has signified that the missionary work does not consist alone in the slum work in Chicago. That work, thought to be the great and important thing to be done, is a very defensive, defective and expensive work. It has absorbed the means and has deprived our poverty-stricken foreign mission field of the help God designed them to have. The use of means in what is called the medical mission work needs most thorough investigation. Means have been consumed and will continue to be consumed in a work which is not the greatest or most important to be done in a world. God calls upon his church that knows the truth to arise and shine, for their light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon them. 3 MR 4, 3.2. Again, in letter 4A, back in 1879, I entreat you to save Dr. Kellogg. I entreat you to save Dr. Kellogg. You must do this by faithful attention to your duties. Never forget. It is a sin to forget. God has given man the powers of memory that he may not forget, and I beg you to task your memories and lift responsibilities. Let the doctor feel assured that you will see what needs to be done without his specifying everything. You can see, you can sense your duties as well as to wait for him to see and mark them out for you. Go to God in humility and plead with him for wisdom. 
for grace to overcome your deficiencies and neglect. God will help you plead his promises. You may have close connection with God. You may at last wear a starry crown. You may win immortal glory through faithful, continual in well-doing. So instead of just pointing at the errors of Dr. Kellogg, she is saying, you do your work as it is in Isaiah 58. He will see it. And then he will see your changes and he will come back to you. Rather than pointing out his mistakes and his separation and his uh, independence, do what you are supposed to do and do not wait for him to come to you to tell you what you are supposed to do, like carrying out the medical missionary work. Do it and the doctor will see it and come to you. How many times we have been prone to pointing out the mistakes without doing what should be done and let the people who have felt aggrieved in the past because of our behaviors say that now we see these people are a changed people. Even though I don't align with them in everything, but I can see they are embracing what they were against uh, in the past. Now, um, I am so sorry that things are as they are, but Saturn has played his cards well and the game is falling into Saturn's hands unless something can be done to save Dr. Kellogg. He sees there is no money for him to obtain. He has therefore difficult that make me feel deep pit for him. I send you this to save you, to have you to try to save him if possible. Letter 170, 1900. Again in 1902, this is the cry of a mother, not all, all a prophet. I hope you will have as little as possible to say about Dr. Kellogg. Pray for him. Ask the Lord to save him from himself. He is in great peril. I am praying for him. Let us all make his case a subject of special prayer. Oh, how pleased Satan will be to have Dr. Kellogg's talents opposed to the work of God. I cannot endure the thought. I pray that the Lord will work in our behalf that his salvation may be revealed. God lives and reigns. He is working out his own will and pleasure. If those he has used in the past now refuse to come into line, he will withdraw his favor from them. And why is Ellen G. White lamenting about Kellogg? Because he had raised Kellogg as his son, paid for his fees to, for training, and made sure that he got the best education to help in medical missionary. And now he was just going apart. And she says, if we can lose such a talent among us, we have lost a lot and she cannot endure. But sometimes we think we are so good that losing one brother is not something unto us. We say, after all, if we lose him, God will raise another. This is not the attitude that E.G. White had upon Kelo. He says, save him. There is no other talent like him among us. But somebody will say, having people reason better than Dr. Kelo, you, you could mention Jethro Claus, you could mention... Um, and uh, I don't want to go into many names, but uh, there are people who rose to do the work again. Um, Dr. Paulson at that time, Sutherland and uh, Spalding and Magan. You could mention this, but uh, Sister White acknowledges there was no one like Kellogg in Adventism. The guy was intellectual, by the way, and uh, he was ahead. Just like we are told that Sister White was a hundred years ahead of the medical fraternity. So Kellogg was so close with E.G. White. And we can say, as Sister White, Kellogg was a hundred years ahead of the medical fraternity that we have today. And so she says, save him. Speak less about him, but just pray for him. This is something that we miss. This is something I miss daily. Instead of concentrating on prayer, we concentrate on the person that has the problem instead of seeking the Lord who can correct this problem. And this is just so prevalent among us, so much in uh, among us that uh, we can hardly save a soul which is being lost because, and I'm guilty of that and uh, may the Lord help me and uh, forgive me. And so, uh, she again says, I am having things presented to me that were my mind. Dr. Kellogg is traveling the same road that he did soon after taking up his responsibilities in the sanitarium. Human son is a lie in regard to God uh, not having a personality. I know this is a falsehood, and yet if we can in any way help the doctor, we must try to do this. What can be said? I'm repeating just this. There is such an exaltation given him that he is about to topple ever over the precipice. What can any of us do? The Lord alone can save Dr. Kello. 
His son of God in nature is true, but he has placed nature where God should be. Nature is not God, but God created nature. This son of God in nature is correct in one sense. God gives us, God gives to nature its life, it is living properties, it is beauty. He is the author of all nature's loveliness. And while he is, he gives us this evidence of mighty power, he is a personal God and Christ is a personal Savior. Again, the Lord requires us to do all that is possible to save Dr. Kello. We are to seek by revealing a conciliatory spirit to save him from himself. Give him no occasion to range himself from the faith. You are not to sanction wrong. You are to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But while you are to stand firm for truth and righteousness, you are to remember your own danger and walk humbly with God. There is an important work to be done in Battle Creek in the coming councils. If you can move so wisely as to save Dr. Kellogg and yet not sacrifice one principle of truth, if you can pass through this crisis without the loss of one soul, it will be because the Lord has worked with minds. A great and wonderful victory will be gained because the Lord has been accepted as the guide and leader of his people. Now, she is saying this statement in 1903 in the full blaze of Kellogg working on the table, uh, on the book full time to be produced in 1903. Just think about that, that even though it may seem to human eyes that um, Kellogg was overboard and he was not listening to the messenger, this motherly love is still crying for his soul. Do everything you can do to save him as late as 1903. I am sending you, letter 59, 1903, I am sending you I'm sending to you three manuscripts to be read to the brethren assembled at Battle Creek in Cancer. This I desire that you sh shall read to the brethren when you discern that the time has come. You know my anxiety regarding the work. My desire that everything possible shall be done to establish unity and drive out dissension. We must do all in our power to save Dr. Kellogg and his associates from the result of the mistakes they have done and to help them to see and understand the way of the Lord. The Lord has gently honored Dr. Kellogg as a physician. If he will now conduct himself aright, the Lord will pardon his mistakes. If he could but realize what burdens he has brought upon me both before and since my return to America, he will change his course of action. I mean to do all in my power to save his soul. And so how many statements can we read of E.G. White uh, about uh, doing everything to save uh, Dr. Kellogg? We can go on and on, and uh, I'll be reading some few of um, them uh, to do everything to save Dr. Uh, Kellogg. Uh, and uh, just before I continue with that, and so I'll, uh, I'll be able to bring something just on the screen and uh, it will be interesting if I find it that is uh, um, yes this is in letter 1893, what made Kellogg so angry with the brethren also? I, I just like to reiterate this as I continue to read on uh, do everything you can do to save Kellogg. It was decided at a certain camp meeting, cheese should not be sold to those on the ground. But on coming to the ground, Dr. Kellogg found to his surprise that a large quantity of cheese had been purchased for sale at the grocery. He and some others objected to this, but those in charge of the grocery said that the cheese had been bought with uh, the consent of Brother Dash and that um, they uh, and that they could not afford to lose money invested in it. This is, I think, Elder E.P. Daniels. Upon this, Dr. Kellogg asked the, the price of the cheese and bought the whole of it from them. He had traced the matter from cause to effect and knew that some food generally thought to be all somewhere injurious. And so, but imagine the surprise of those who had studied the question of healthful living to find their brethren working counter to right principles. Thus, it was still the time of the general conference at Minneapolis. We stood on the field of battle for nearly three years, but at that time, decided changes took place among our people, and through the grace of God, we gained decided victory. And this was Elder 
E.P. Daniel, who was some official in the general conference. And so these are the things that act the conscience on the, uh, uh, the heart of uh, uh, Kellogg. And he could see that uh, Battle Creek was playing games with him when it came to the health message. Uh, and so just continuing with the do what you can do to save Dr. Kellogg, uh, she in 1905 wrote, I've been sorry that I ever asked Elder A.T. Jones to try to save Dr. Kellogg. I was trying with all my power in prayer to save him. I told Brethren Reed, Paulson, and A.T. Jones that the enemy through Dr. Kellogg had been weaving his decept deceptive influence over their minds. This deceptive spiritualistic influence exercised over God's servant was similar to the influence that was exercised by Satan in the Garden of Eden. So on the committee of um, uh, of, um, of the living temple, we had there at Jonas, and uh, we had Paulson also, uh, I believe, and uh, I'll check into it, who said that they find nothing wrong in the book Living Temple. And that is why E.G. White was saying, if the people who have been in truth for so long could be deceived like this. How about the normal people? So in 1 T 166.2, I have seen the great sacrifice which Jesus made to redeem man. He did not consider his own life too dear to sacrifice. Say, Jesus, love one another as I have loved you. Do you feel when a brother errs that you could give your life to save him? If you feel thus, you can approach him and affect his heart. You are just the one to visit that brother. But it is a lamentable fact that many who profess to be brethren are not willing to sacrifice any of their opinions or their judgment to save a brother. There is but little love for one another, a selfish spirit manifested. And so uh, it is interesting, this last statement, that she says that, um, uh, do you feel when a brother is that you could give your life to save him? If you feel thus, you can approach him and affect his heart. You are just the one to visit that brother. But it is lamentable fact that many who profess to be brethren are not willing to sacrifice any of their opinions. And so sometimes it will come to sacrificing our opinions or our judgment to save a brother. But uh, what hinders that, she says, there is no love. We have always decried the condition of Philadelphia church and... Uh, Truly, we are Laodicean, increased in riches and needing of nothing, even not needing a fellowship with our fellow brethren and sisters. Reason, when we became Laodicea, actually the Philadelphian love went with it. And this is what has been lacking in Laodicea. If only we could regain our Philadelphian love and have an upper room experience, we would be able to say, save the brother. Do all you can to save the brother. And so this is E.G. White, the prophet and the messengers. Uh, so I have said before, it's not always roses for the people who have been called in the offices to work for the Lord. They have to endure a lot. And even when people are in gross errors, you can still have, hear that uh, voice of uh, lamentation upon the erring soul rather than just rebuke and scats. And you can really read uh, the weeping prophet Jeremiah crying for the northern uh, kingdom which had gone into apostasy and uh, crying to go to Migdol in Egypt. You know, when uh, Jeremiah looked at this thing, it really hurt him so much. Abraham was given knowledge and so there were the patriarchs and the prophets of his time. But uh, when the truth could not be preserved, the children of Israel had to go into the land of the south, Egypt, which is the land of darkness. The south is always darkness. In Egypt for 400 years, if I recall in the book of uh, Deuteronomy in Exodus, it, uh, it talks about 430 years. And so they went in Egypt and when God wanted to bring them into the land of Canaan, he brought them out of Egypt. And at this point, we are seeing that uh, uh, in the time of Jeremiah, that the children of Israel were not only going back to Babylon, they were not only going back to Medo-Persia, they were not only going back to Greece, but they were going deep down in Egypt. And this is the road that we are traveling today. This is the road that Kellogg was traveling, spiritual atheism. And... Uh, 
no God and nothingness, no sanctuary, no atonement and all that stuff by espousing spiritual, atheistic sentiments, which actually it destroyed the whole sanctuary and the God of the sanctuary. When uh, Sister White saw this, she wept as uh, she wept as uh, the weeping prophet uh, Jeremiah himself. What could he do to save the children of Israel? Again, you come to Paul. He says that I wish I could be cut off for the sake of Israel. And Sister White ends saying that, um, do we feel that somebody has gone so far and we can give our lives unto them? It will need sometimes to sacrifice our opinion without compromising, but sacrificing our what we call our opinion and um, uh, uh, judgment uh, for the sake of a brother. And so this is the story of Kellogg. I, I, I didn't want to go into theological implications and the doctrines that were there, but uh, I just wanted us to listen to the voice of uh, the messenger talking about try to save Dr. Kellogg. We, we, had, we have seen how far he had gone, uh, taking over the sanitarium, writing the book, The Living Temple, making the sanitarium an undenominational institution. But still there's that voice, do everything you can do to save Dr. Kellogg. If all the church members could assume this to any erring person amidst us, then I believe we could be far more, and even the doctrinal issues we will be having will be far better solved by uh, brotherly love. But how a lamentation that... Uh, Many, including myself, we have failed in this, and uh, may our repentance and uh, salvation start now as we seek the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, once again, thank you for the Sabbath and thank you for the spirit of reconciliation. I'll bet that you will give us the spirit of a weeping prophet trying to save Israel from going down to Egypt and another trying to save a brother from going down to the people of the world to seek his knowledge. But adventure that uh, one may be found amongst us this day will be saved because he tried to sacrifice his opinion and judgment for the salvation of a brother who can estimate the worth of the soul. Help us to be firm in principle, but uh, in loving nature to others who are erring mortals as even we are. Father, if we err, let us err on the side of mercy. For this is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.